comes to color grading, I've experienced quite a bit of failure and a lot of frustration. Even though color grading is often the last step of the post-production process, I think it's one of the first things that people notice when they click on your video. The purpose of this video is for me to share with you a process that I have developed so that I could spend less time fiddling with settings and probably taking myself way too far and off the edge and give myself a consistent baseline that I could start from and push a little farther if I wanted to, or just leave it and be fine with it. If you're at that place of not really knowing what else to try, or maybe you're just looking for a new workflow as you're just now starting to use DaVinci Resolve, hopefully this video will be super helpful for you. So here we are in DaVinci Resolve. If you've never been in DaVinci Resolve ever before, it can get a little overwhelming, but I think they do a pretty good job at trying to keep it simple. Let's go ahead and jump over to the color tab where we're gonna be doing a majority of our work. So over here on the right side of DaVinci Resolve is what we call the nodes panel. Unlike Photoshop and Illustrator, which are layer based, this is node based, which is more of a flow, as you can see indicated by this little line. There's a start and there's a finish. Let me just reset the stage once again before we dive in. This tutorial is really focusing on the basics to get you from log footage like this to fully colored, great looking footage. Ultimately, my goals are to give you a baseline of tools that you can use when you think you need to use them and not just little do this, do that, you know, drag this here, turn this up to 10. Stuff like that is really annoying to me. I just kind of wish I knew why it was working or how it was working. So hopefully if you can follow along, I'll do my best to walk you through why I'm doing what I'm doing and you get the point. So the first step in this process is to take this shot, this log image, and transform it into a wider, more bright and vibrant color gamut and color space otherwise known as Rec 709. And so to do that, we need to grab this little Resolve Effects, which is under this Effects page, and just drag it onto that clip. Color Space Transform seems like a lot of information really quick, but really there's only two things that you need to know, your color space and your gamma. Both of those things can be found in your camera settings under Log or your picture profile, and it'll just tell you. So for this shot here, I know that my color space was Gen 4 and my input gamut, I know that I was shooting in film Gen 4. So when I click on it, you'll see something's going on, but we're not quite where we want to be yet. We're telling the software two things, how we shot the footage and how we want the footage to look. And that's what we'll do next. Let's jump over to the output color space. And like I mentioned, you want to hit Rec 709 right here. Just scroll down and you'll find it. And then your output gamma, unless you're doing something very specific like a feature film for projectors or you're delivering to something weird, more than likely you will always be choosing gamma 2.4. And there you go. Pretty punchy, pretty saturated, good looking shot. For some of you, you might just stop watching this tutorial now because this is pretty good enough for you already. You have a good shot. You went from this to this, and that's a pretty massive step already but we can go a little bit further to get it just a little better. What I want you to do is take this note and kind of move it towards the end because everything that we're doing, we wanna be doing in the log space, this space, not this space, because there's less information to actually work with on the post end. So I'm gonna do just a few more, just so I have some more room to do some work later. This first node, I'm gonna label WB, which is white balance. The second node, I'm gonna label EXP, which I use for exposure, and then contrast. So those are my three basic things that I do for pretty much every single shot before the color space transform. So let's go ahead and dive into each one of these, and then we'll make further nodes if we have to, to further sweeten the shot. So white balance. White balance is probably one of the most important parts of color grading. This is one of those things that can make or break your footage very quickly. Even if there's a really beautiful color contrast, I like to start with a balanced image and then move back towards that creative intent just so that I know where I'm starting from so I can know where I'm going. That's probably a Cars reference. There ain't no need to watch where I'm going. Just need to know where I've been. So let's go ahead and open up our scopes. It's this tab here. So if you have one of these selected, just click on this and open it up and click on this two card version. I like to use the two card just because I like to see two different versions of the image and the scopes just so I can get some better sense of what's going on. 
So white balancing, what are we doing? How do we do it? What's the goal here? As you can see here, the image actually looks pretty good. If you hold alt or option on your keyboard and you use your mouse wheel, you can scroll in just to make this a little bit bigger. The way that I like to white balance is I, I can use the temp and the temp sliders, but honestly, I just grab this offset and I just slightly move it in a direction that I need to. And my goal, I kind of treat it like a game. I try to get this information as central as I can. As you can see, there's like a center mass and sometimes they swing a little further blue just because the sky is blue. So don't try and you know push it way up that way because you can clearly see that that's not balanced. But if you try and move the mass just down towards the center, you can see it's starting to become very balanced. So this shot already was pretty balanced. So that's white balance. Very important, very straightforward, and honestly, pretty easy. So let's move on to our next node, which is exposure. I find it really hard to teach exposure to people. But again, the best way to do it is to focus on your creative intent when you shot it and to trust the scopes. You don't want your footage looking like this, where everything is clipped to kingdom come. You have no information in the highlights. And again, you don't want it looking like this either, where all your information in the blacks are just gone. Normally, you want to keep yourself within these ranges. And that's a pretty good baseline to work from. So for this shot, I think maybe we could lift the shadows just a little bit, bring the midtones, which is this gamma wheel, down just a touch because of my skin. I just want it to be a little bit lower. And then we'll push the gain up just a little bit to increase um, some of the contrast. Again, I'm just trying to correct the shot. We're gonna work on contrast. Contrast, again, is just one of those things that you can add in a bunch of different ways. When I'm trying to add contrast, all I really do is I just slide this, watching my image, also watching the scopes, making sure it doesn't break just getting what I feel like is a pretty good spot. So that's pretty good to me. And then as you probably can tell, the shadows are very dark now, and I like to use this pivot to sort of control. If you just stretch it out just a little bit, if you slide it to the left, you can make further contrast in the shadows. And then if you go to the left, you can make further contrast in the highlights. So this final step in this process is optional, but it really depends on how you want your footage to look in the end. I think for this shot, it feels a little cold. So I'd love to warm it up or just adjust some of the hues to better make the image the way that I wanted it to when we shot it. A warm, sunsetty vibe, pinks and oranges, all that stuff. So how do you do that? What's the best way to do it? There's a lot of ways, but if you don't want to mess around with hues, maybe you have a good amount of LUTs that you like to use, but they're a little too extreme, if you know what I mean. The colors just are just destroying your image. Maybe they're not the best. I'm going to hop over into this node here and we're going to adjust this key output to three. Think of this as like opacity for this node here. I'm just sending it to about 30%. And honestly, what I'm just going to do is I'm going to add a LUT. This is a couple of favorites that I have. I find LUTs to be super helpful for this, just when you're trying to add a little bit more contrast, or maybe you're just trying to just adjust some of the hues quickly. So I like this one right here. As you can see, it's very subtle, uh, especially just because it's being applied at only 30%. And as you can see, it's brought the image down, you know, the shadows down. So I'm gonna hop back into the exposure node, just lift it up just a tiny bit and boom, that's literally all I would do for a shot. I could go in easily in a different node, you know, and adjust all of these different hues and play with the saturation and get something very similar. But sometimes it's just easier to use a LUT and I'm really happy with this image. And there you go. A very simple, effective, and quick solution to getting your footage graded in Resolve quickly. Showing somebody the possibilities of DaVinci Resolve, even if it's just the basics, it's so exciting because I know that it was one of the key pieces of software that really allowed me to understand my footage a little bit better and teach me what to shoot and how not to shoot. So that when I go back and I go shoot another project, I feel a little bit more capable of understanding what it's gonna look like once I throw it into Resolve. I think a common misconception amongst young filmmakers and people who are new to color grading is that you have to make your footage look different than when you shot it. At least that's what I thought when I first started shooting. As we develop as filmmakers, we tend to know what we want sooner rather than later. When you're on set and you're lighting a scene, or maybe you're just setting up your camera, 
you'll be able to make smarter, more informed decisions based off of your previous experience. That's really exciting because once you get it into Resolve, you can do the same thing. All of which just kind of gets you to that place that you were hoping to get to a little happier and a lot faster. If you're a young filmmaker, a new filmmaker, or maybe you're an old seasoned vet, I'd love to have you around on the channel. So hit subscribe if you're interested. Drop a comment and share what you'd like to learn more about in terms of filmmaking. I'd love to post another tutorial helping everyone out. But until then, I'll see you guys in the next one.